What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today I bring you what in my opinion are 10 plus weapons you need to have before the Forsaken drops on September 4th Now most if not all of these weapons are quite easy to obtain bar two which come from the lead So with the week plus you have left to collect the ones you don't have these shouldn't really be much of a problem. But before we get into it guys, if you would like to show your support to both me and the channel, hitting that like button truly does that. Also subscribe if you are new around here. Forsaken is around the corner and I'm gonna be on it like nobody else. Also stay tuned until the end of the video to find out about my monthly controller giveaway. Okay, so I've seen a few of these weapons you must own before Forsaken drops videos. Some do suggest some great weapons you should try and get, others are well a little more stupid with the choices they are picking. I'm seeing a couple of Nightfall exclusive weapons mentioned. Well, how are you supposed to get a Nightfall weapon if the Nightfall isn't available? Plus it seems people ain't taking into account some of the weapons switching to year 2 when a cross over arrives. As we know some weapons will change and will be brought forward to year 2 when Forsaken drops with the Forsaken standard of weapons with random rolls and so forth, better devils to name one. Others are the Belligent, the Shepherd's Watch, the Hawthorne's Field Forge Shotgun, the Alone as a Guard Raid Sniper Rifle, the Perfect Paradox, the Frigid Jackal, the Silicon Aroma and a few others. What we see here is weapons not only being changed and brought forward to the Forsaken standard of weapons with random rolls, but also moving slots too. These are all power weapons, but have now been changed to kinetic weapons, well will be when the Forsaken lands. What this tells me is, seeing as the Alone of the God is mentioned here, the Raid Sniper, these Raid weapons will stay the same as they are now, and new ones will not be incorporated. Does this mean all Raid weapons will all get the change over? No it certainly doesn't, but one might think it might. But even if they do make the crossover guys, Burns will be locked into place which is a major point in grinding for the weapons I suggest today. When the Forsaken drops, your current weapons will be locked into place, meaning you won't be able to switch burns when you please. But even so that's the case and your year one weapons won't have the year one benefits such as the masterworks and the random rolls, you can still infuse these weapons up to the current power level and use them within the Forsaken to help you on your journey to that top level. Yeah, I have seen people mention the fact that weapons could be introduced that will replace weapons such as the Nameless Midnight and the Yuyu's Gift. That to me is entirely possible. But for sure guys, it isn't factual. The only thing you can do now is prepare the best you can just in case this isn't the case guys. So what we will do people is start with the raid weapons I suggest you guys try and get. Firstly, which is major, is the raid shotgun the zenith of your kind. This as you know guys drops from the raid and for me hasn't been a weapon I really needed because of having the Icarus SG. Before that me having the perfect paradox and before that me having a Hawthorne's shotgun. I mean it's probably better than all apart from the Icarus SG but I just haven't really needed it. Well when the Forsaken drops guys, the Icarus SG will be locked to Solar, your current ones even if they are Void or Arc will switch over to Solar and lock into place, same as the Icarus Sniper. The Perfect Paradox will become a kinetic weapon, meaning it will have no burn and so will the Hawthorne's Field Forge Shotgun. This means the Zenith of your kind is one of the only weapons remaining left in the game right now which you can get, which won't change when the Forsaken lands, which is basically the same archetype of shotgun the ones I just mentioned are, also having that full auto. With the Icarus SG changing to Solar, which I also suggest is a weapon you must get hold of, Escalation Protocol is your best friend in doing this, I can only suggest guys farming for the Zenith of your kind and making sure it's void. If you get a second one, which would be lucky, but head or two weeks of playing remaining, make sure you change the second one to arc what most people use the icarus sg for now is destroying bosses super quick when farming such things that will be super limited in doing so with it being locked to solar but the zenith won't be a void variant paired with a tractor cannon used by a fellow teammate will do some serious damage although not quite that of the icarus sg which is a beast hence why bungie are locking it to solar the zenith of your kind is still a weapon you should get hold of it's still one of the only shotguns available in game now you can grind for, which won't change when a Forsaken lands, so getting it, changing it to Void or Arc is a must in my opinion. Okay, so let's move on, and here we have this scout rifle called the Mananan SR4, a weapon which has been a fan favorite for a while, coming into play by many much of the time in doing raids, nightfalls, and many other PvE activities. The weapon just feels great to use, and that's because, well, it's a great weapon, and with its explosive payload perk, which is what you want on most long range scouts, it makes shit go boom. 
Again, for me, I only have the one, but at the moment I am looking for another two. My current one is a void type, but the amount of times I've changed this thing and it burns is unreal, people. Getting three of these for me isn't exactly a must, but I know for sure it will be a weapon I use within the Forsaken, as many others will also. But when the burns are locked into place, I want to have three I can just pick from suiting the activity and the burn I need it for. The Mana Man is a great weapon, one I suggest you guys aim to get if you don't already have it. Now much like the Mananan, the Vacuna is a weapon which again does almost the same job but for me it doesn't quite feel as good as the Mananan but it still does a pretty decent job for what it's worth. Maybe if you can't manage to get through the Mananans, maybe using the Vacuna as a third burn which you are missing or even if the Mananan is a third burn to the missing two Vacunas you have. That works. Having three of these kinds of scouts all offering a different burn in my opinion is definitely going to be helpful going into the Forsaken DLC. Okay so moving on and next up we have another raid weapon and that is the Sins of the Past. Now this raid launcher I can't tell you how many times it has come in super handy but with other power weapons coming into play like the spindle I have used it less often I will admit but even so guys it's still a weapon you want under your belt. The blast radius paired with the cluster bombs make it super useful and you can understand why it's a fan favourite. Now we know this weapon will still drop when the Forsaken lands but what burn will it be locked to? We do not know. Will it even be locked to a burn? Will it still drop off in multiple burns? That's still a thing we do not know. For this reason I've added it to my list of weapons to get before the Forsaken arrives. Me personally I haven't had much luck in doing raids, to be honest I ain't fussed about raids at the moment. I thought I had what I wanted but knowing the changes coming into play with the Forsaken it seems as though I might need to start playing them again for certain weapons prior to the Forsaken. But I have a backup weapon just in case because I have two of the next best thing in my opinion and that is the Vanguard Curtain Call, basically available for most PvE loot pools. I already have my three burns ready to go if I don't get two more sins before the Forsaken DLC drops, which most probably won't be the case. I'm happy to have two curtain calls and just one sins of the past. You can do the same guys, if the raid is off limits, the curtain call well isn't as good as the sins in my opinion, it still works the same offering a much better velocity than the sins does, also having that cluster bombs. So two of one and one of the other, all offering different burns, is what you want, so get on it people. Okay so moving on and on to the only kinetic weapon feature today aimed at PvE for usage and that is the Nameless Midnight. Damn oh damn what a great scout rifle, been with me since day one, loved it more and more as time has gone on and it's still a weapon I frequently use to this day and probably will keep using far far into the Forsaken DLC. It's a Vanguard scout rifle available from most of the PvE loot pools such as Cryptoc Engrams, Vanguard Engrams and many other places. With it's great power, great range, great everything basically, the weapon is perfect all round. That paired with explosive payload making shit go bang, it's a weapon many of us just love. Saying that people is actually a very good long range PvP weapon also, although not much compares to the Graviton, it still competes at that long range people. So yeah guys, the Nameless Midnight is a weapon in my opinion you need to own before the Forsaken drops. Okay so lastly for the PvE weapons and we have an auto rifle and that is the Valkyrie. Now would you believe me if I told you I only got this yesterday, determined that I spent 2000 gunsmith materials in getting it. It's a weapon which is just great for many PvE scenarios. Now basically it doesn't have the power of a hand cannon, it doesn't have the range of a scout rifle and it certainly offers no exotic perks. But what it does do is fire and fire fast, a weapon used for schools in defeating Callus, a fan favourite there in shooting Argos in those sensitive parts and for close range damage on almost every add in the game, the weapon is a beast. Now this archetype isn't limited to a single weapon, there are others you can get. Some of you may already have others from other activities, the Dark Decider from the Iron Banner, the Dead Orbit Hollow Earth variant and another version available from PvE loot pools in their Perseverance. All of these can do the same job, so if you have any of those guys, check the burns, make a group of three and keep hold of them people. Making sure you have three of these auto rifles, one offering a different burn. Okay, so enough of the PvE people and onto PvP. So these weapons I feel will have a great impact when the Forsaken drops and are definitely worth your time trying to earn if you don't have them already. Firstly the Antio SMG, if you can land this with a mass work applying a stat boost to either range or stability that paired with the kinetic stability mods on your armour, this guys truly is unstoppable. 
Now, like me, you probably ain't a big fan of SMGs. I ain't either. But even so, guys, it's still a weapon to have in your collection if you haven't had it before. Because I have a feeling it might just be a hidden gem in the future many forget about and could come up trumps. Don't forget, guys, once the Forsaken lands, something like 95% of the year one weapons will be removed from loot pools, meaning you won't be able to obtain them anymore unless you've already had them in the past meaning you can pick them up from your collections so yes guys Antioch D is a must for those PvP heads out there if you haven't had it already okay so moving on people and we have four auto rifles which I wouldn't dare go into the Forsaken without now we saw how fast auto rifles kill within a new PvP build when the Forsaken drops they seem to destroy hence why there are a few auto rifles I believe will be just too good to ignore and leave behind now the first two are basically two of the same weapon, and that is the UU's Gift and the Positive Outlook. Both of these weapons are insane for what they are, both destroy and both are must-owns. You guys know about the UU's Gift, at one stage it was so good and used so often in PvP that Bungie actually nerfed it a little. This is where the Positive Outlook steps in, although maybe it hasn't got the perks of the UU's, believe me when I say it guys, it is just as good as the UU's was. There are other weapons in this archetype which are decent too for sure. So others to watch out for are the Kibo AR3, I believe that's pronounced, the Jiangxi AR4, I believe that's pronounced, and one you may have a line around from time back is the Future War Court variant, the number. These are all great variants of what in my opinion are probably the best archetype of auto rifles for PvP in the game. Okay, so moving on to two other auto rifles you definitely should be grinding towards and looking out for. Firstly, the Vanguard's Origin Story, a weapon you get, I'm sure, for completing the original campaign way, way back. In my opinion, still to this day, the best kinetic PvP auto rifle in the game. It also drops from engrams all over the place. You've got to have had this in the past, people, but if you haven't, try and get it now. And the other auto rifle, which is just great, is the Braytech Winterwolf. This is a weapon available from Anna Bray exclusively. For this weapon, you need to get resonant stems via public events, patrols, uh, HVTs, and so forth. Getting four of them, go into your inventory and create a blue variant. Then you have to locate the node where this leads you to. Guides on every node are all over the interwebs, people, so you shouldn't have a problem finding the one you need. Once you find your node, open it up and hopefully you get a Warmind engram from it. It isn't a guarantee, but there is a chance. Then go to Anna Bray. Here there are four weapons you can obtain from these Warmind engrams. The Winter Wolf being one of them. It is 100% worth the grind, folks, for sure. The Braytech Winter Wolf, in the minds of many, is the best auto rifle in PvP, in the game, bar none. It is all a matter of opinion, though, and I can see where people are coming from. Plus, it looks absolutely epic, too. And people, the last PvP weapon I suggest you guys try and farm for, if you haven't got it already, is the Requiem, the Pulse Rifle, the absolute monster of a weapon. Now, I made a video on this weapon quite a while back, and I actually forgot about it. I put it in my vault and forgot about it. Now, there is an Iron Banner Pulse Rifle called the Time Worn Spy, which for me, just absolutely murders. For me, it keeps up with the Gravitator Lance, it keeps up with the Vigilance Wing. It's just a great, great weapon. But it's an Iron Banner weapon. You can't get that now, and I doubt you'll be able to get it before the Forsaken drops. But the Requiem is a beast too. Of the same archetype, it's almost as good, if not better. It probably is better in the minds of many. It probably does have better perks too, but it just absolutely draws people. Like I said, I made a video on this weapon a while back and absolutely loved it. I posted a live gameplay, which you're seeing in the background now, and I was just murdering with it. I couldn't believe how quick it fired and how accurate it was and just how much damage it dealt. It is a great, great weapon, people. I suggest you guys try and farm for. Now, I do believe it is also available for most PvE loot pools, such as Cryptark Engrams, The Gunsmith, and many other places, people. So check if you've got this. If you haven't, do keep an eye open for this weapon. The Requiem is an absolute animal. And on that note, guys, we have come to the end of the video. If you have a suggestion which you believe can help others weapon-wise when the Forsaken drops, be sure to let us know within the comments section and why you believe it could help. Also guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really does help me out. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe for them daily Destiny videos. And before we go guys, every single month I give away a fully customizable controller for either Xbox or PlayStation sent anywhere in the world. To be with a chance of winning it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and drop a like on the video. Then follow the Gleam link at the top of the video description. It's fast, simple and legit guys. But on that note, I am out. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.